Right now, one of the places we know there's a lot of opportunity available is Facebook Marketplace. So this is going to be the ultimate guide to selling on Facebook Marketplace. Uh -huh. So this compilation of techniques came directly from the stud stack. All of these techniques come from real sales, real people, and real products. If you don't know, the stud stack is our private Facebook group where it's other maker business owners. So if you sell the work that you create, this is the place for you. We can collaborate, ask questions, get ideas. Um, it's you know healthy competition among peers. So if you're interested, jump in there. The guys and girls in the stud stack just wanted to give this video to you guys um, just to show the power of the group. So you can enjoy the fruits of others' labor by <laughs> learning some of these lessons the easy way. So let's get started. All right, so tip number one is to price high. And this tip comes directly from you guys. I can't tell you how many DMs and messages and emails and comments we get from people saying, that's great, but nobody in my area would pay X amount of dollars for this project that I built. Really? Nobody? Not one soul. There is not a single human being in your general area that would pay that price. We find that a little hard to believe. So we go into this tip saying price high on Facebook Marketplace. What you are building is a premium product. It's completely customized and handmade by you. Even if you're more of a beginner woodworker, still it's higher quality than the majority of other things you're gonna get from stores. So you should be paying a price that matches the realm of quality that you're building in. And I know you love it. And I know it's fun because we love it and it's fun for us. But joy is not a form of payment. When you inevitably get burnt out after making 150 cornhole boards, you need to be making money or you will lose your mind. So price high, find the customers that are willing to pay your price because they are out there. And don't waste your time on people who are simply trying to nickel and dime you. All right, this next tip comes from our buddy Christian in the stud stack. He makes very nice detailed posts on Facebook Marketplace. He puts the size, the shape, the color, the stain choices, everything that you need in order to order the piece. So theoretically, when someone is scrolling through Facebook and they come across his ad, they don't need any more information. They know exactly the size, exactly what it's gonna look like, and they can just reach out and order from him. Because the people on Facebook Marketplace and the experience of our group, they're looking for an easy buy. They don't wanna to have to make a bunch of decisions and figure a whole bunch of stuff out and message 10 times back and forth. They just wanna order the project if they like it. The longer that they take to order, the greater chance that they're gonna abandon the cart and not make a full purchase. So you wanna give them every piece of information that they need to make a decision. That way when they reach out to you, you're ready to seal the deal. All right, technique number three is something not to do. And we'll tell you what to do after we tell you what not to do. So the guys on the studs deck see this one all the time. They'll see people post random pictures of some stuff that they build generally, and then they'll put like a $1 price tag on it and say, contact me. Like a contact me to see what you wanna buy, we can negotiate price, and that just leaves way too much open for negotiation. All right, so this is a bad idea for a couple of reasons. One, if they just see your whole portfolio, people have a really hard time seeing what you've built and then transforming that in their own heads to what they want built for themselves. I know that seems really weird, but that's just our experience. Customers have a hard time connecting the dots between what they're seeing and what they want and what you can do and all that kind of stuff. So the second reason that it's not good to just post random pictures with a dollar on there is because you're gonna get a lot of people who can't afford your work and they have no idea what it's priced because all you put on there is one dollar and contact me. And what that's gonna do to you is you're gonna get all these messages, you're gonna end up getting a lot of rejection. You're gonna pitch them your price and a lot of people are just gonna say no. And that's gonna make you think that maybe you are pricing it too high. When in all reality, you're not. You're just attracting the wrong type of customers because you don't have a clearly organized and laid out post. So it's much easier if you just post pictures of what you sell. All right, number four, on that note, 
take really good pictures of your furniture staged in the house. We've seen people go from no sales on Facebook Marketplace to more work than they can handle in the stud stack simply because they changed this one thing about their posts. Customers have a really difficult time visualizing furniture from a garage in their own home. I mean, take a look at any furniture website. It's all staged, it's in a home, it's in a room, and it's not on the production facility. It's not on the truck being delivered. It's in the room, set up, furnished, displayed, ready to go. So take your tables, take your stools, take your chairs, put them in your house in a nice well-lit area and take a great photo of that item. And I promise you, you will get way more responses on Facebook Marketplace. So you don't need a big fancy camera. Honestly, your cell phone is more than enough. Just make sure you get enough light in the lens because that's the limiting factor for your cell phone pictures. Um, that you need to be next to a sunny window or a couple different lamps. Just try to get as much light as you can on the subject before you take the picture. All right, so the fifth technique is using video to communicate. I know that sounds crazy, but our buddy in the stud stack, Austin, basically pioneered this one and we thought it was such a cool idea. So what he'll do when he gets a message from somebody interested in one of his pieces is he doesn't just type a message back to him. He pulls out the video on his phone, holds it up and says, hey, awesome to see that you're interested in one of our kitchen tables. My name's Jenny, I'll be the one building it. We do have an opening on the schedule, so if you can get me a date and a time and a phone number, I'd love to sit down and talk over your table. And after that, we can get a deposit and start building. Thanks. That video response alone is gonna set you apart from every other woodworker on Facebook Marketplace because it shows that you are a real person rather than a faceless business. And people are just so not used to seeing that, it's gonna be super refreshing to your potential clients. So instead of hiding behind little message bubbles, you can just get right there in person and close the sale. Six foot by three foot kitchen table for $2,000. Is this item still available? Yes. Okay, great. What are the dimensions? Six foot by three foot. Okay, is $2,000 your best price? Because I found one at Walmart for $1,000. Yes, $2,000 is my best price. Can you make this out of endangered Brazilian walnut? Sure, for a slight price increase, we could make it out of that wood if you'd like. Okay, great. Can you then paint it black? That's it, I'm out. I'm out. Is this item still available? What are we on, number six? Six. Six. Number six, we've talked about this before on the channel. It is meeting and delivering in a public place. This is not only for your safety, but it makes the customer feel better. Um, instead of showing up at your house, at some random person's garage, um, you can meet in a neutral area. We like to use Home Depot parking lot. Um, we've also delivered batches of items in a parking lot of a local restaurant. We just pulled a trailer up and unloaded all the tables as people showed up to pick them up. Um, it was super cool. People made friends with uh, everybody else that was buying tables. It was a neat experience for the customers. But um, yeah, just meeting and delivering in a local, like neutral place uh, really makes your customers feel good. Um, it's just, it's, it's nice, it's, it's low threat. Because we'd hate to hear that somebody, you know, sold something on Facebook Marketplace and then got robbed or never got paid and it was just in a random driveway or they delivered to a home and it was just a sketchy situation. So just deliver in a public setting and you should be good to go. All right, so technique number seven. The guys and gals on the stud stack love this one and that is to only take payment in forms of cash or electronic payment. So Zelle, PayPal, Stripe, stuff like that. Um, one, it's safe for you because it's a very direct form of payment. Once you have it, you have it. You are waiting on nothing. Because uh, you'd hate to see people's checks bounce and you don't get the payment and it's late. Also, it's more secure for the client. People know if they pay in cash, they have an exact amount. It went from them directly to you. If you use electronic payments, people can track it on their end and your end. You can even have people swipe a credit card right then and there. People love paying with credit cards. They're comfortable with it. We do it all the time. Stick with cash or electronic payment when you do exchanges over Facebook Marketplace. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. That was dumb. I know it was dumb. 
All right, number eight. Are we on eight? Uh, yeah. Okay, number eight. Uh, what was it again? Keep information ready to copy and paste. Oh, so I know this contradicts what I said before, but customers, even though you give them all the information in the post, they're not gonna read it. Have a note-taking app or something on your phone ready to go with common answers to frequently asked questions. So what is the size? What color stain? Um, what is it made of? Even if that stuff is in your description, which it should be, a lot of customers are just not gonna read it. There's a large percentage of the population that likes bothering other people for information instead of consuming it on their own. So don't be surprised when somebody skips right past your item description and bothers you about questions that are in the description. I have put dimensions first line in the post in big letters and get a message saying, what are the dimensions? That is all, bye. So uh, that's gonna lead into our next one, but just don't get too upset about it. Just be prepared. Just be that nice approachable salesperson and uh, things will smooth over just fine. All right, this next one kind of hits home because um, we know the human species is all kinds of frustrating. And Especially the ones on the internet. People on the internet are the most frustrating form of human beings alive. Oh my gosh, it's, they're not that bad. They're pretty great. Some of them they're are actually, great. A lot of them are pretty great. Um, this uh, technique is number nine. Yep. Yeah, number nine. And that is don't lose your cool. You know, be fast to respond. Don't leave people hanging. Be polite. They chose to come to you because you're the expert. You know how to build what they want. They have no clue what they're doing. So they don't know woodworking. They yeah. don't know furniture. They know nothing. Like even the most simple, basic things that you think a customer should understand, they just don't. And it's not any anything bad on them. So don't yeah. get frustrated. It's just they're not in this world, which is why they're hiring you and paying a premium for it. There so, are tons of things that I have to buy from other people because I don't know how to do it. I can woodwork, but I don't know how to wire my own electricity in my house. Like, we're not experts on everything. So don't educate, just try to sell and be polite and calm and cool and zen. Can I get some of that? No, you may not. <laughs> All right, and our 10th and final technique is if somebody messages you about a product, assume the sale, assume that they are going to buy it. As again, what our buddy Austin in the stud stack does, a lot of times that makes it easier and you're kind of helping your own self close. You're assuming, hey, you messaged me, you saw the dimensions, you saw the pictures, this means you want to buy. And if that person was kind of on the fence, if you use language and verbiage that sounds like the sale is done and they're buying, that kind of sways them to make up their mind a little bit and say, okay, cool. The sale is gonna go through, I do want this. Okay, so what we mean by this exactly is, you know when you go uh, clothes shopping and you take your pile of clothes and you dump it on the counter, the, the clerk, she doesn't sit there and ask before she scans. She doesn't say, hey, are you sure you want this shirt? We have it in three other colors. Are you sure it's the right size? Is this exactly what you want? So don't pepper your customers with questions. Just scan the barcode, throw it in the bag and get them to check out as fast as possible. So when they reach out and say, hey, I wanna buy a kitchen table, great. We got an opening in the schedule. Let's schedule a phone call and I'll start building tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like, assume that they are ready to check out yep. because at some level they reached out to you. Yeah. They could have just scrolled right by on Facebook. At some level, they're ready to purchase from you. You just need to hold their hand and walk them to the checkout counter. Yeah, of all people, you don't need to be the one that's slowing down the sale in any way. And we woodworkers, we get in our own way all the time. Designs by Donnie. Donnie always says this. Uh, he went into a whole spiel at Workbench Con. He's <laughs> like, work, woodworkers get in their own way all yeah. the time. And it's by doing things like this where you're just, you're just trying to be nice. You're not trying to be pushy, but it really hurts you in the long run. I'm like, I'm not saying be mean. That's why we had technique no. number eight, nine. That's why we had the previous technique about not losing your cool. That one. Hey, sit. Shake. Almost. Almost. Nope, there you go, good boy. So this is Bruce, but this tip also comes from our friend Bruce in the stud stack. Yes, it does. Bruce A. Ulrich. Bruce's bonus tip is collect contact information from your customers so that you can sell to them again. Yes. Get a phone number, get an email, get some sort of contact information. That way you can reach out to your customer in the future and you don't have to wait on them to come back to you through Facebook Marketplace. Yes. You can call them up and say, hey, 
you know, you bought a kitchen table from us, that's great. Now we're selling coffee tables. Do you want a matching coffee table? Because why stop at just one sale with one customer when you don't have to? Because it's way easier to sell to a previous customer than it is to find a new one. It is 10 times more expensive to sign a new customer. Okay, yes, I, it was a trick question. Yep. Correct. So when you get a good one, grab a phone number and hang on to it. Right, Bruce? He said, yeah. All right, so like we said, all this advice came from the stud stack directly. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to share this with you, give you a taste of what it's like in there. Um, yeah. These are all tips that got shared back and forth. All we did was make one post. It's just a really great place to share your struggles, share your wins. In a community that knows exactly what you're talking about. I mean, we've got a web designer in there. Oh, we'll just quit talking about it. They wanted to talk for themselves. Yes. So we're gonna roll some footage of them. Do you mind? <laughs> I'm trying to record a video here. It's like, well, my ear itches, so. Hey guys, uh, my name's Jared. I have a small little woodworking furniture business down in Southern Utah. And I am a member of the Stud Stack. Um, I highly encourage you to join the Stud Stack if, if you're thinking about it. Bite the bullet, pull the trigger, do all those things. Get, get in the group. Uh, and why I can say that so energetically is I've been part of the group for about a month now, uh, and it's been a great experience. Uh, we've had so many people um, just willing to help. You put up a comment, a question, anything you might need help with, and you get responses throughout the entire day for the next week, however long. Um, people are just so willing to share and to give and to, to make you feel like you're part of a little community, a group that's willing to invest in you and invest in your success. Hey guys, RJ from Makers Workout here in Oklahoma. And even though I've run a successful business for myself for a number of years, there's something to be said for being surrounded with a group of people who are trying to accomplish exactly what you're doing. And let me tell you, the stud stat gave me that and so, so much more. One of the things that I was really impressed with when I got into the stud stack was the wide range of people in different places of their business. I didn't jump into a group where everybody was making six figures and stuff like that. I joined a group that had people who were just like me, who were looking, how do I take this hobby of mine or how do I take this business of mine and really elevate it? The stud stack has been fantastic when it comes to feedback whether it's pricing or just tools or what's the best way to do this, how do I talk to customers, it's really been fantastic to be able to post something in the group and get truly beneficial responses, responses that people have thought through from experience instead of just, you know, whatever is flying off the top of their head. So I would highly recommend that you check out the Sud Stack. You literally have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Hop on in, say hello, we'd be happy to have you guys. Hey fellow makers, I'm John and I am a recent member of the Stud Stack and I've been a part of a couple other uh, woodworking groups and I haven't really used them a whole lot, but uh, I saw more value in the Stud Stack uh, because it's uh, the Stud Stack is full of other makers who are business minded and uh, and you have access to their maker minds, their business aspects. Jenny and Davis are always posting videos that get you thinking like uh, what tactics are you using to create business? What mindsets are you uh, maintaining that helps you to be a success? Not being a part of it is a big detriment to uh, having a woodworking business. Definitely uh, jump on. Uh, it's worth the uh, subscription. Um, I was in another group that was uh, a little bit cheaper every month to be in, but I really didn't find value in it because it was simply skill building and I'm not working on that right now. I am uh, working on building a business and that's one of the reasons why I uh, decided to join the stud stack like you should so come on board and join us and uh, Give and it shall be given to you Join the stud stack. It's it's that simple uh, Jenny and Davis are great hosts. They they encourage a, um, a kind respectful environment 
people are are just what make this group so special I think actually being on the Facebook group has created a couple sales for me those are gonna be some cutting boards that I'm finishing up today uh, and getting out to actually some, some military people I think that's all I have to say just stud stack is great it's worth it you you will get everything you put into it back tenfold seriously uh, just come hang out with us cool people woodworking weirdos if you're thinking about it do it if you're not thinking about it do it okay join the stud stack and i hope to meet you guys soon and uh hope to get to know you good luck